All right. So last things last, let me talk about the SpongeBob movie, Sponge um, on the Run. I right. did not watch this. I this is what the third or fourth SpongeBob movie. I'm sure this, this, so is, this is this is the third movie, right? Okay, okay. So so yeah, this 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 gonna be for the kids, man. This gonna be for the picnic and them, right? This gonna be for the family and them, right? Yes, it's like, <laughs> like all it have no kids who's watch SpongeBob anymore, right? And SpongeBob is everybody who into SpongeBob is at least twenty five now, right? I mean, seriously. Well, that that's the thing, cause yeah. I think right now they 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 reach what season thirteen or something like that, and I'm like, okay, well. People, right, no, so kids, kids aren't right, watching this, right? Because the show is designed and yeah, always has been designed for kids, right? So right now, SpongeBob always came after my time. Um, but but What's why? Here? Why yeah. I kind of it came after I I got into it, but why I I was into it because it always felt like a kind of workable, slightly nicer version to um, you know, Rock. Oh, uh, not Rock was Modern Life. Um, Ren and Simpy. Ren and Simpy. Yeah, that, 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 like, Really it, it, absurd yeah. humor, yes. Yeah, exactly. Right. It's running and simpy, but but for a little younger, like a little younger, like it, it you know. But uh, running and simpy was like it had a lot of dull stuff, but then decided to, to dial it back, and then this dials it back even more for the younger crowd, and then say, okay, oh, we could have the same level of absurdity, but with thing. So it had yeah, a wait, whole wait, with colorful, with with color, right. and you know, um, yeah, well, likable characters and shit. Right. You know what I mean? And you have a whole, you have a whole effectively a whole generation. Well, it's effectively for Gen Z as yeah. Well, the show came out in what ninety nine. Um, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, a whole whole generation of of Gen Zers who like grew up on the show. Like I didn't grow up on the show. I, I you had to go, you had to, you had to dial back about a five years for me, or even further, I would argue, um, because I was into Rocco and 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 well, Doug and Ariel Monsters or something like that. By the time this came out, I was kind of too old for it. Um, yeah, but, I think around that time it was what Pop of Gills and. Well, this Cartoon well, no. Network stuff that we were we were into oh, in the well, late right. '90s, right? Yeah. But I think Power Pop Girls already came out like a good '95 by then. I just talk about when it was officially came out. Like I, I forget when it officially aired, but I think it aired '99. Um, Power Pop Girls was '96, I think, or something like that, or probably even earlier. Um, but I just didn't get into it. The only thing I, I knew was um, well, the voice acting, like right? Tom Kenny and Clancy, Clancy Brown was in it. So I was like, oh, Lex Luthor in this, all right, cool. Um, and that was, yeah. that was the thing. And then the movie came and went. It was kind of funny again because I, I wasn't even I wasn't even into it. Ironically, you know, like a lot of college students, a little smoke weed and um, watch watch SpongeBob. I wasn't yeah. even into it that <laughs> sense um, because it was never that funny for me. Like I get it's absurdist and I get kids might laugh at this, but it didn't have anything for me to like really laugh at. Uh, but then I I don't watch it enough to know. Um, okay. I don't, I think I only knew one person was kind of into it and saying it was kind of funny maybe you know and you, you wear it on your you know normal college you wear some t-shirt with that character ironically looking all serious or some bullshit like that no normal meme shit right mm. um, so by the time a movie came out when did the first movie come out 2004 four right that's the only time I, I really got into this and say okay this I, I see why this kind of funny now and i thought the movie was pretty good especially that last sequence with david hasselhoff david uh, yeah. right never watched the second movie but i know it had like this weird like actual 3d stuff going on and, I, and then the third one is what now um i've only seen a handful of bits <laughs> of the show okay so, and then all the memes you watch now um with it you know it have a lot of like internet memes referencing spongebob because it was like the actual episode reference this thing and then somebody will Make a joke about something in the real world that they they make a make fun of and they'll use SpongeBob as a reference point. That's it. Mm. Um, I've never gotten into SpongeBob other than that. But yeah, go ahead. All right. So my my quick history with with SpongeBob SquarePants as a as a as a as a franchise, right? Um, yeah. I think it was like I wasn't like okay, like, like when I first got cable, I jumped immediately onto Cartoon Network, right? That was my yeah. shit. You know, it was Pop of Gills, yeah. it was Samurai Jack. Um, Rocky, right. You know, uh, well, Dexter's Laboratory was still going on, but, you know, it, right. it was it was still going strong around that time, right? And right. then, um, for some reason, I just went to Nickelodeon. I don't think it was because of um, the show um, Avatar, right? Last Airbender. I think that came out, like, long after the show here. But some period in the 2000s, I just checked out Nickelodeon, right? Just to see what they have. And right. yeah, I saw SpongeBob and I think the moment that really had me like, okay, this show is on some some next level, you know, smoke some weed type shit, right? 
was a moment involving I forgot who the characters were, right? And there was a friggin' campfire dread. The yeah. bottom of the ocean. Yeah, I saw yeah, that exactly. jaw hit the floor. I was like, right. all right. If if this is the kind of humor you are going with with this, I should I should check this out. And I've watched a season or two. Um, Doug the really absurdist, weird, insane humor of it. Um, you know, I mean the the musical calls, just the weird characters and the voice acting. I really dug the voice acting. And then after I saw the the movie, the first one movie, uh, the first movie, sorry, which yeah had me. In, well, I mean, I, I laughed my ass off because at the time I was like, well, it's a SpongeBob movie. It kind of yeah. get where you get, right? Um, after that, I just kind of locked off of it because, you know, I got older. I mean, anime, yeah. I got back into anime, sorry, you know what I mean? So, Bleach and Naruto were, were the thing, were, were my shits back then, right? Yeah. Um, I just never got back into to SpongeBob. I know there was the second movie, um, Sponge Out of Water, which came out in 2015. But by then, I was like, all right, I am too old for this, right? I am way too old for this. But I was just amazed at how strong this franchise kept going, right? right yes, yeah. I mean, no, I know it's part. It was a part of pop culture way before the second movie came out. But still, when that second movie came out, I was like, "Are we still doing this? People still watch the show? All right, well, okay, all right." So this third one came out now, Sponge and the Run, right? I saw the trailer for this, wasn't really blown away by it because by I remember at the time I was just like, well. I pretty much grown up. I'm, I'm done with SpongeBob. There's no need for me to watch this. Okay, so I guess there's families, there's Gen Zers who have the kids. So it's like, all right, well, watch what I used to watch back in the 2000s with my friends in college dorms smoking weed, right? Okay, yeah, right. I mean, see what you want. But <laughs> I mean, we could carry the argument that the show is designed for 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 um for that, yeah. For, 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 yeah, for people to get high to. But uh, sorry, this just the, the humor is surrealist at times. And yeah, it is. <laughs> You can pretty much enjoy it, you know, inhibited, right? But whatever. Yeah. But I saw the trailer for this and I was like, all right, well, all right, we're still doing this thing. Okay, it coming out in theaters. I'm not going to see that at all. Actually, I didn't even see the first movie in theaters. I saw it in on Nickelodeon itself, right? Um, but what surprised me here, this is why I checked out the first place, is that it made its way to Netflix because right. of COVID, right? And I was like, well, you know, like I, I, I thought they would have, Probably they were like okay, so I thought they would have done like what um like what Scoop did like months ago, right? Right. When the right. when the um quarantine actually started, right? Be released just on VOD and you just check it out or you buy it or whatever it is, right? Like I thought that was what they were going for with this. When I see it coming out on Netflix, I'm like, all right, well, okay, Paramount, do your thing, all right? No, nah, right? right. So that's that really was that really was what spurred me on to check this movie out, right? So, in an absolute nutshell, right? I'm even gonna stay long on premise because I mean, by now it's a SpongeBob movie. You don't really go into these things for for big complex premises at all, right? So what's about it's about well SpongeBob and Patrick, right? Essentially, what happens is that um, well, you know SpongeBob's. Has a pet snail by the name of Gary. You know, right. he always um, meows like a cat. Right, right you know right, that, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah, <laughs> uh, we had a... uh, the thing is, yeah. oh, I should have mentioned this before we start. Um, I know it had a big little back and forth with they went against the wishes of the creator of the show and have a whole thing with that. Um, you know, I, I, can't, I don't know the details of it, but I know they undermine, like, they went against his wishes in terms of the direction or they should have ended the show, I think, or he wanted to end the show. And all the clothes they wanted us to make money. I ain't sure what went on there. Whatever. Oh, well, I'm not sure I, that I don't I'm not know sure about that. that relevant because I, I suspect the fan base might like you know be against this movie because of that or something like that. And go ahead. Well, psh, now, now you have me intrigued by because uh well, yeah, for those who don't know, um the creator of the show, Stephen Um Hillingberg, he passed away two go years ahead. ago, right? And they actually dedicated the movie to him. Idea, which I thought was, was pretty nice. And they, they credit him. They actually have him as a executive producer and creator of, you know, this, of well, of the show. Yeah. So, yeah, what happens is that, well, SpongeBob's um, Sneal Gary is kidnapped by Poseidon. Um, yes, Poseidon's in this movie. I didn't even, like, I don't... Okay, so because I'm not versed in the world of Bikini Bottom, right? right. Uh, I don't know if he is a normal, a regular character, or if they okay, just so put I him think in the show just because. I, I, and he's, he's also be looking like Trident, but green skin, right? That character? Yes, 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 yes. Right. So I, I there's an episode I remember. This is one episode I do remember where 
SpongeBob made one burger. It was they had to make they had to make burger. It was a burger competition, and SpongeBob right. made one burger that tastes great, and he made a bunch of Krabby Patties that, that taste terrible. And that was kind of the joke. The sure. guy's a bit now that it was you know he if if you remember Mondo Burger versus Good Burger, right? It's that right. Um, that is pretty much the whole thing. That that's, that's where the that's why I know the character for. I'm sure the character came back and whatever. It is. But that's the episode I know that is a big classic episode. Yeah, okay. Go okay. Ahead. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. So anyway, so Poseidon um kidnaps um, or should say Sneal naps Gary. That's Gary, right. sorry, I'm saying Gary. Right. Um, because Poseidon is well vain, right? So he essentially wants he he, he takes like the the Sneal mucus or whatever you call it the, the sorry the, the steel slime or whatever you call it right. basically yeah. to help with his face because he has this skin blemish that he wants to remove right yeah that's that literally what he needs it for so Spongebob so returns to home um gary is in there he finds out what's going on true um plankton one of my favorite characters in the show right because he's the one who kind of set things up because once again he's trying to get mr Krabs um uh secret formula right Remember that that was the thing that that's like his, you know, like how the brain from Pinky the Brain always wants world dominance. With this case, right. he just yeah. always wants that formula because he wants to be he wants to have a better you know uh, burger jointer than than crabs, right? Yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. essentially, SpongeBob Patrick go on, go on this adventure here, um, driving them down to um, oh gosh, I forget the names. So basically, Poseidon is at this place. Um, where is it called? Right. The Lost City of Atlantic City. Right. Okay. Which is essentially <laughs> their take right. on Las Vegas. Yeah, it's, well, it's, it's, a, it's Atlantic City. Atlantic City is Las Vegas. It's, uh, sorry, Atlantic City is also a big gambling place. Yes, because yes, yes. I, yes of course. Like yeah. a funny bit. Okay. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I love how it's called Lost City. You know, Lost City of Atlantis. Right. Uh-huh, right? right. Um, driving them there is a robot that, um, oh gosh, that um, Sandy created, right? Right. So the Otto, who I didn't even know till the very end, was voiced by Aquafina. It's like, what? Okay. Okay. Because <laughs> okay. they, yeah. they distort her voice to me because it's not like a rumor that it's, it's really hilarious, right? But anyway, so she is driving them by, you know, car, well, driving them in a the car now, to that to that place. Um, and yeah, essentially, that's what it's about. Well, wait, well, I forgot to mention too, on the way, you know, because it is a road trip show now. You know they have to encounter some weird stuff. So one of the weird things that they um, that they encounter is this sage, right. which has the face of Keanu Reeves himself. So, okay, so yeah, yeah, yeah. It was it was in the trailer for this, yeah. and when I saw it at first, I was like, all right, this this kind of dumb. But I know this is something that you know the the, the movies have done, right? So you had David Hasselhoff in the first right. film, um, yeah. in his Borg Nine in the second one. I right, haven't yeah. seen that film, so I don't know what he did. I think that was like the last film he did before he passed away. But okay. this one here is Keanu Reeves basically playing this wise seed. So he would talk to SpongeBob and Patrick and tell him, This is what you must do, and this is yeah. the beginning of your journey. You know what I mean, but it's Keanu doing this be himself, basically. Yeah, that's that's part of the joke. And it's actually a really good joke. Um, there are some there are some extras as well. Sorry, some cameos that appear. I really don't want to spoil who they are. That okay. that's part of the, the the joy of the film, just seeing them. But I will say a majority of them um, are in live action because yeah, just like the just like both just like the previous films, they do incorporate some well live action into it. And I'll stop here, right? So here's the funny thing, as someone, and just keeping this in mind, folks, uh, as someone who has not watched. The show in a long while, Jared. I kind of enjoyed it. Okay. Yeah, I kind of for myself really enjoyed this too. Way yeah. more than, than than I expected. Like I just thought that, you know, even though I was I was fair towards school, but I remember you not really caring for it at all, right? Yeah, I, I, I uh, hated it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you hated it. I was just like, well, all right, this is a new modern quote unquote direction. They're gonna go with school. All right, I, 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 I kind of feel it, okay, but then he, you sure, right? Yeah, okay. so I thought it was going to be another scoop, right, where essentially you're taking, well, well reason being is that I thought that they were going to take the show that, remember, haven't seen ages, 
and try to update it, but in your worst ways, you know what I mean, to try and make yeah. it feel relevant with you know by with uh by losing the spirit of the show in the process. Right, right. Yeah, right. because by now it has this what two decade long running franchise dread is like they don't even have to they don't even have to I mean ever so often they would do things a little different but true and true it is every bit as Spongebob as you would expect it to be it still has the charm it still has the goofy humor still have the slapstick humor it still have the surrealist absurdist humor as well too so yeah it, it's just like going back into this world and being like oh yeah like it's, it's almost like it never left yet um Everybody, everybody character-wise is exactly how you expect him to be. SpongeBob is still SpongeBob. Um, admittedly, he would get on my news, but you know that that that's yeah. part of the character. You know, we see it with Patrick. You know, we never saw you get on my news. You know, I don't know why, but I just kind of really like the eels in this world, like you know, Mister Krabs, the Plankton, yeah. um, Squidward. There's just something about them. this. Their characters just make me laugh every time I see them there. So yeah, I mean, this is every bit as SpongeBob as you expect it to be. Now I'm not no SpongeBob nerd, so I can't come and say, "Well, you know, this is a far departure from what they did in the first movie, which was like right. what, sixteen years ago." Right. So yeah, I I can't see that, right? Um, and I know the whole utilization of live action isn't new to this franchise, right? But I thought like for what they did here. It worked well, right? Because it's basically his road trip. This is adventure. Ever so often, you know, they do... Well, they don't really do the acid trip thing, but they kind of hint at it in a, sense, in a sense where it's almost like a dream, but, you know, it's just all these weird characters doing stuff. But because of who's on screen, though, and because of the scenario, uh, it, it works, right? Um, one scene in, in, involving this ghost town, as all of us say, um, for some people, they might find this to be some sort of... Like, where the, the, the show sort of slows down now. Just to tell this one bit, but I don't know. I was just cracking up at it, mainly because of who was on screen and what it is they were doing. Yeah, I, I thought it would there, but it didn't take away from the overall story. Fortunately, which I was glad about. Like uh, I was really worried that it was going to entirely be there and, and not be about the whole Atlantic City stuff. Speaking of Atlantic City, um, yeah, the, the the moments there. Once again, it's just every bit what you'd expect it to be. It's Patrick and Spongebob in Atlanta City, they get involved in gambling, you know, mean all kind of crazy stuff, Dread, and the way how it plays out works, the song that they chose for this, for, well, there's a montage involving the two of them, the, um, I'm not going to see what song it is, but it is a very late 90s throwback joint in every sense of the word, like when they hear it, though, you'll be like, wow, like, where did they dig this up from, but it works, it totally works with what's going on, right? And overall, the story itself is simple. It's to the point it actually has heart to it, which, um, yeah, I mean, I mean, you kind of forget that the show has heart, right? It has yeah. emotion to it. It's not just hijinks and slapstick stuff for the sake of it. Um, you know, mainly, you know, typical SpongeBob stuff, you know, friendship, you know, mainly stuff with um, mainly between, well, SpongeBob and Patrick and, well, SpongeBob and um, and Gary, right? You know what I mean? So it's it's genuine, right? They even do, well, they show this in the trailer as well, and it's something similar to what they did in school. Uh, they show them as kids, actually. The main characters as kids. <laughs> like, I thought it was going to be all sappy. Like, I'd have a couple of... Sa- it, it's it's sappy and it's saccharine, but at the same time, because of the, the humor that's underneath it, it, it totally works. So, and, you know, it, it has a really smart and strong message for you know for the picnic and them you know what I mean for little kids when they watch it like yeah you know what I mean so um I would say that if you are a diehard fan if you grew up on this show yeah you know what I mean you'll have no problem fitting back into this world because of how clear cut and how straightforward this show is it doesn't have to remind you oh well back in this thing or back in season two or whatever it is Oh, this is really shit between you. No, know, by by now you know who these characters are. You know you should you know who the relationship sorry. You know the relationships, you know the um you know who Mr. Krabs is, you know what a Krabby Party is, you know these things by now, right? Even if you haven't seen the show in ages, right? And the show itself not gonna try to remind you of something that happened like what in season ten or whatever or wherever where, where people stop watching, right? It just takes you in, it tells you where it is to tell you, it gives you the humor that you expect from it, and it gives you a decent enough story that holds up for like what? Um 
91 minutes actually it it doesn't yeah. run that long um i really dug the the cameos that appeared this other even gonna spoil anything beyond keanu reeves um but speaking of keanu i thought that <laughs> yeah when he was on screen it was funny but then it's just him being him and that's part of the joke right it's keanu but he is in this weird siege thing with this glow behind him and that's a joke some noticeable voice actors show up as well not gonna spoil anything beyond that and you know i mean yeah i mean i in terms of what they were going for in terms of just this entertaining story you know i mean just all these crazy hijinks and you know i mean just one quip after the next i thought it would but once again i know no big spongebob news i can't come and say well you know well this is a watered down version of how you know the, the you know the show that I grew up on and I loved. You know what I mean? Like I I don't know. Maybe if if you're that type, you probably wouldn't enjoy that much. But because right, of how right. it sticks to its material, because you know the material uh, so well, even though you might not watch the show for um for ages, it works right. Um, the animation is solid. The sort of CG thing that they you they utilize it now, it works. It's it's out. I wouldn't like it, it took a while for it to get into because I think they used it in the second film, but because we haven't seen the second film, yeah, I don't really have any context. But here it, it works, right? They even do a little fake out slight spoiler, right? Where it kind of makes it feel like you're watching uh, something like a Finding Nemo or Dory because they use it like legit, you know, CG animation uh, and then they just go to the sort of style that they have here with the show. It's a nice little beat and switch that they did there. I thought that was really cool. Voice acting is great throughout. Couple of voices sound a little older because I mean, once again, I mean, it's, it's actors doing this thing for years, right? So yeah, even Tom Kenny doesn't sound the way how he sounded back like in the two thousands, right? But still, right. it's SpongeBob's true and true, right? Um, everybody that you know and love, they show up as well. Um, and I forgot to mention to the music. Well, I'll just close with this, right? Uh, Hans Zimmer work on this shit. Okay. I'm like what? You know what I mean? Well, Hans Zimmer and this guy Steve Mazzaro. I'm not I've actually never heard of this guy before, but yeah, I thought that the music that they did for this was serviceable. It was it was actually really great. It fit the film perfectly. But one last thing I want to say before I get to read it. Um, in terms of modernizing the the, the, the franchise, they did something pretty interesting that uh, I I did not see coming at all. So. <laughs> They actually had a couple of songs that closed the film, right? And one of which I think is called The Krabby Step, right? It's called The Krabby Step, right? The video, the lyric video for it is out right now. It features Tiger and Sweely. I forgot the other guy, um, little Bossy, whatever his name is. But yeah, it's Tiger and Sweely and this. And um, one lie, that shit kind of slapped though. Okay. <laughs> it it, it kind of slap. You know what I mean? Basically, it's like a trap. It's like they just take bits and elements of the song, sorry, of the music. Well, particularly the team song of SpongeBob. I right. just put it on this more or less this feel good trap beat and it work. They even have this reggaeton song um, <laughs> near the end of the movie, too. And yeah, they, they do incorporate like um, references to the show as well. And I was like, what? Okay, this, this actually work. <laughs> Like it's it's very silly, it's very childish, but it fits the world of SpongeBob. That that's what it is. So as a whole, I mean, this is not a masterpiece, right? This is not the best, greatest animated film ever made, right? By now, this world has already been established. So you don't go into a SpongeBob movie expecting anything but SpongeBob and his shenanigans, right? If you're going expecting anything else, if you're going expecting some Pixar level shit, you're not gonna get that. You only the closest thing you get to Pixar, like I say, is just the intro. But other than that, it's the world that you know, it's the humor that you know, it's the characters that you you love or hate or you're in between with. <laughs> it's the weird, dumb humor that's goofy and best enjoy when you're high, but it still fits. And you know, what I mean, if you grew up on the franchise and you have kids, y'all could just sit down and pop some corn and watch this. I mean, it's on Netflix, right? So you could have a blast with this. Uh, if you generally do not care about this franchise at all, yes, yeah, skip this movie. This is not going to do anything for you at all. If you just marginally um, familiar with it, but it just do lock it in as much as it should, like you wouldn't sit through 20 minutes of one episode then yeah this wouldn't work for you but 
for everybody else, yeah, this is an absolute must-see, man. It's on Netflix, so you have no excuse. So, reason why is I'm going to give this a uh, strong 3.5 out of 5, man. I, I think this is really absolutely worth checking out, man. It, it shows that there is still life in this world of SpongeBob, which, which really surprised me, because by now, I think this franchise should just be, you know, in the water, right? Dead in the water. Right? Perfect example. Uh, Pokemon. I think that franchise should be dead. <laughs> By now, yeah. but it, it, it's still it's yeah. still there. Like, yeah, well, then Pokemon. Well, the anime could probably end with Ash Arc. The problem is that they need new characters. But Ash, I find Pokemon as a franchise. They keep going on. The last game was good. You know what? No, I, I, I'm talking about the games now. I'm talking about the anime. Oh, the the anime yeah, should yeah, stop yeah. here. Right, anime right. should stop. Right? Yeah, Pokemon could go on forever if it wants to, but the anime do had had to stop, man. But anyway, so yeah, this is exactly what it is, Jed. You know what I mean? It's and, you know, props to, you know, just the creative team behind this franchise just being able to to pull off this stuff and still still, still have a lot, you know, more stories to tell in this world, right? Um, who knows, this might be, you know, the equivalent to the, the Simpsons, God forbid, right? But, you know, for what's with, yeah, I mean, the SpongeBob franchise still has life. This movie is evidence of that. So yeah, if you're a fan, definitely check out Sponge the Run. If you're not a fan at all, if you really don't care about anything SpongeBob, yeah, skip this. But I had fun with this, right? And for me, who haven't who who haven't really watched an episode or a movie of this in ages, and me still enjoying this show as much as I did, yeah, I mean that that that's that's amazing to me. So yeah, by all means, if you're a fan, yeah, definitely check out the SpongeBob right. movie, sure. Sponge yeah. on the Run. <laughs>